Hey, Internet. Brainy Bill from Bill Loud and Science here. It's no secret to anyone that I love a good thrift store find. There have been times in my life where much of my wardrobe was probably made up of thrift store purchases. And after visiting them all over the country, I can confirm what you already suspect is true. Most thrift stores kind of smell the same. Is it the smell of cleaners and sanitizers that they use on the products before they sell them? Is it a natural musk that's given off from fabric as it ages? Is it the collected farts in hundreds of pairs of denim and cotton pants? Today, we're gonna dig in and find out in our inaugural episode of Wonder Why Wednesday. We are gonna wonder why all thrift stores smell the same. This was a question addressed by Vice in 2017. They asked the founder and professional odorologist of Aromaco, Simon Harrop, why do all thrift stores kind of have a similar smell? And he reported that actually, the answer is probably simpler than you think. The answer is, it's us. If you think about it, a lot of thrift stores don't actually wash or dry clean or clean the items that are donated to them. Instead, they rely on us to do it before that, and then they might throw it away if it smells musty or if it's stained. But a lot of the items that go into a thrift store are dry clean only, which, as the classic Mitch Hedberg line goes, means it's dirty. And those accumulated years of human smell have really inundated, have really soaked into the clothes Harv and his team actually used a technique called gas liquid chromatography. Basically, they took a bottle of the scent, heated it up, and then analyzed the different particles that came out of it as it heated up and broke down. And they found that indeed those smells are pretty much similar to human odor. So that tells us why thrift stores all kind of smell the same, but it doesn't really tell us what that smell is coming from. The human body actually has three different kinds of sweat glands. There's the eccrine gland, which we're born with, which produces sweat that's mostly water. And the sebaceous gland that develops during puberty also produces sweat that's mostly water. But the apocrine gland produces sweat that contains a lot of fatty acids. And those acids are delicious to the bacteria that live on our skin, particularly under our arms and our belly buttons. Now the apocrine system can produce sweat when we're exercising, but it can also produce it for a variety of reasons. Uh, one could be that we're stressed, one could be that we are sick or have some kind of condition that's producing it, and another one is basic hormonal changes that we all go through as we grow. When those bacteria break down the fatty acids in that sweat, they release different compounds. There's thioalcohols, which have a kind of sulfuric or rotten egg smell. There's the propionic acids, which are related to acetic acid or vinegar. And there's the isovaleric acids, which are really present in strong cheeses. Any one of those smells is enough to make you want to pinch your nose. Put a lot of them together and stick them in a sweaty armpit. Well, you get the picture. Or rather, you get the smell. So there you have it. The smell of thrift stores is really the smell of us. Regardless, good deals, good fashion, they're not to be missed. This has been Brainy Bill from Bill Loud and Science, and don't forget, do more science, have more fun. Hey internet, Brainy Bill from Bill Loud and Science here. As many of you may know, I'm not just a science edutainer. Most of my background comes from being a musician. In fact, I got into science because I was studying music and there was a lot of questions I had about music that music wasn't answering. So I turned to science. And since then, I have a lot of friends who have asked me questions about science having to do with music. So today, for Wondery Wednesday, Thursday edition, I'm a little behind this week, I have a question here from Mike, who asks, Bill, Theoretically speaking, what would the required tip velocity be for a drumstick to combust while playing? Either maple or hickory stick would tip. Excellent question, Mike. Let's find out. Ooh, plastic tips. Yeah. So, 
The first place my brain goes when I'm thinking about this question is the space shuttle re-entry, right? We've seen these videos, these graphics from NASA, the space shuttle re-enters the Earth's atmosphere and gets very, very hot, red glowing hot, in fact. And as I have always understood it, that was mostly because of friction between dust and air molecules and the outside of the space shuttle. As it turns out though, most of that heat actually comes from compression. When you compress gases, the energy in the gas has to go somewhere. Those little tiny molecules are always vibrating. And when you push them together, they have less room to vibrate. And so the energy of their collisions, of their being compressed together, is expressed in heat. The same principle applies to drumsticks. As they move through the air, they're compressing the air ahead of them, and that air is going to heat up just slightly. So now we know where the heat comes from, but how much heat are we going to need? Maple, hickory, and oak combust at about 572 degrees Fahrenheit. I sat down and tried to do a bunch of fancy calculations with Boyle's Law and Charles' Law and the ideal gas law and volume and geometry, and ultimately, I think I'm gonna trust this website, I'll put here somewhere, that tells us uh, the combustion of nylon and cotton, which is slightly lower, but in the same neighborhood. To get those to combust at sea level, you need about 1,553 miles per hour, which gives us roughly two times the speed of sound. So there you have it. You want your drumsticks to combust mid-stroke? You're gonna need to get them moving at about two times the speed of sound. This has been Brainy Bill from Bill Loud and Science and Wondery Wednesday. As always, do more science, have more fun, and rock on. Cool. Cool. Cool.